2005, an amazing incident happened. 450 sheep jumped off a cliff in a village in Turkey and committed suicide. This is real life, I'm not kidding. 450 sheep jump off a cliff, commit suicide. It happens in a village in Turkey. It's printed in the newspapers. It gets picked up by other newspapers and published around the world. Some Australian scientists read this article. They're amazed. How did this happen? How do sheep commit suicide? It's not known to happen. The higher, more intelligent species do it. You know? But sheep, they never do it. So they approach their university, they get a grant to go and study the phenomena. What's happening here? Uh, to dig in and to understand, are the sheep really evolving as a species? Are they becoming more intelligent? Takes them six months and lots and lots of dollars of research. And then they come to the truth. The truth is that all of these sheep were from a village at the base of that mountain. It was a village of shepherds. Literally thousands of livestock in that village. And on that particular morning, all of the sheep were gathered together and taken up for grazing. They're walking on this mountain and they're close to the edge. And sheep always move in big, huge groups, you know. Security in numbers, safety in numbers. So they're moving as a group, as a bunch being herded and being put together and kept moving along by all the shepherds with them. Now the guy in the front who's supposed to be the leader of that group, he thinks the guys behind me know what they're doing because they're pushing me forward. They're all moving as big one, one big bunch. The guys behind me know what they're doing. They're pushing me forward. So he keeps walking ahead of them, being pushed by the ones behind him. The ones behind him are thinking the guy in the front knows what he's doing. So we better just follow him. So he knows he's leading, we'll follow him. So that's what they're doing. All of them are thinking the other guy knows what he's doing. Now the first sheep comes towards the edge and because the guys behind him are pushing him, he slips, he loses his footing, falls down. Believe it or not, one by one, 1,500 sheep after him jump off that cliff because the first guy did it. Listen. Then why did only 450 die? Because those were the first 450. The others landed on them, they were saved. This is real life. Now this is often how human beings live also. Mm -hmm. We never question our own life. We never question what we are here to do. Who are we? What is my purpose in life? My brother, thank you very much. This is really how human beings behave. We never question. We don't question anything. We don't question religion. We don't question science. We don't question politics. We don't question authorities. We don't question anything. Some people even justify because it's been working like that in the past. So it's going to always work like that. And it's always going to give them the same result it has been given in the past. Nobody questions. People are afraid to ask questions. Just this, at the same, not too long ago, with the same, um, what's going on in the news in the Middle East. When I tell people question, they get up, uh, uh, upset, they get offended. Some of them get offended with me. They want to cut me off, and they ask me, "Are you sure you are safe?" I mean, they question. I'm like, really? We don't ask any question. You think God, who created this whole universe? He doesn't expect us to ask him questions who don't understand things, whether it be the religion, the Bible, the book, the Quran, life, whatever. You don't think God uh, uh, accepts and invites questions? You as a parent, you have a child growing up. We all know children from young age, three, four, five years old when he can talk. What are they going to do? They're going to ask you questions about everything and almost anything. Because that's how they learn. They are curious about the world around them and they don't know everything and they don't understand everything. So they will ask you questions about everything. Well, God expects us as his children to also go to him and ask him questions about everything. But religion told you don't question. You ask questions, it's an abomination. But how are you supposed to learn? You just be like a sheep, just keep going, keep going, boom, you jump off the cliff. The next one behind you, keep going, keep going. Don't ask any questions, keep going. And those of us who has ask questions, they are looking at us like something wrong with us when you are supposed to ask questions. 
question everything and everyone including yourself so you can get to the bottom and know the truth because the truth shall set you free this is real life now this is often how human beings live also we never question our own life we never question what we are here to do who are we what is my purpose in life thank you instead we live like sheep simply being conditioned by others thank and following what the world expects of us and wants us to do thank you we live not by our own north star we live by the directions set within us by the world thank you so you hear that beloved you are meant to question everything and anything including yourself there's nothing wrong with asking questions God does not have a uh, issue with you asking him questions. No religion make you think, oh, don't question God. God didn't tell you that. It's not even a Bible that but say, don't question God. So how are you supposed to even know God? How are you supposed to understand him? How are you supposed to relate to him? How are you supposed to understand this whole big vast universe he created and put you inside? How are you supposed to understand how things function? How are you supposed to understand the spiritual realm where God dwells? Because the Bible says he is spirit. So how do you how are you going to communicate with him? How are you going to understand him? How are you going to understand this world if you ask no question? You just take whatever your apostle say, whatever your bishop say, whatever your pastor say, whatever CNN say, whatever the news media say, whatever the politicians say, whatever your mother, your father, your grandmother, all the traditions. Some of us, especially some of us from Africa, we follow tradition that are two, three, four hundred years old, two, three thousand years old, and we follow them without asking any question. Nobody asks any question. And people think because it's been going on for 2,000 years, that means it's right. So people who are enslaved, the black people who they brought from Africa and brought them to America made them slaves. If they never sat back and began to ask questions, why are we enslaved and rise up, they will still be slaves today. Many of the revolution and changes that many of us that, that are enjoying, some of the privileges and the liberation and the freedom that some of us are enjoying today in the world, because some people before us stood up, rose up and asked questions, and because they begin to ask questions, demand an answer, we are enjoying we are enjoying the fruits of them of their boldness and the courage to rise up and question the status quo and question the powers that be, the powers that be. Excuse me. So don't be so complacent and complacent and just sit and just accept everything and you're scared because religion too have put fear in you. Don't question. Sit down. Your prayer closet or sit down in your quiet room your meditation room, whatever sit down and ask questions to god he will answer you how are you going to know him how are you going to if you're going to get a relationship with somebody you go on a date you go on a blind date with somebody for instance let me make this relatable you go on a blind date with somebody and you meet them you meet face to face how are you going to get to know that person if you don't ask any questions about them how are you going to have any relationship and maintain any relationship with anybody who ask questions? The point of this message is question. Don't just follow the crowd. Don't just obey the powers that be. Don't just take anything because the book is 2,000 years old or 100 years old or 100 million thousand years old. You must still question because even if, they, if you say the book was inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it was still written by men. Men sometimes have evil heart, ulterior motive, evil agenda that can slip through and be put there. That doesn't mean everything in the book is wrong, but you must question it. Question it doesn't mean you are questioning the existence of God. Questioning things doesn't mean you are questioning the existence of God. He exists. Those who say he doesn't exist, check their brains. And maybe they had a lobotomy or something anyway. And let me, before I digress, thank you very much. Make sure you, you share this. Make sure you subscribe. Put your comment below. Let's discuss. Is it good to ask questions? Should we begin to question everything? Science, medicine, religion, spirituality, education system, the LGBT agenda, every agenda, racism, everything, war, crimes, everything, marriage, whatever. Should we begin to question everything? Question everything doesn't mean you're looking for trouble, you're looking for reason to agree or disagree. Sometimes you may be questioning because you just want to learn and you don't know. And sometimes you may, you may be questioning because you want to challenge uh, the powers that be. Sometimes you may question because you just want to disrupt the powers that be or disrupt the things the way it has been flowing or you want to shake the table or you want to flip the table shatter the table flip the boat whatever but there's nothing wrong question is very healthy if you stop questioning to me you stop living you stop thinking you stop dreaming question thank you